The intake we have is uh, pretty bulky, it weighs a decent amount and it has a lot of extra stuff that we added onto it. Uh, one improvement could be to add surgical tubing which comes in the kit of parts. Uh, it works pretty well for gripping the wiffle balls. Uh, another one is we tried adding little frillies down here to pick up the balls better, uh, but beyond that it works pretty well. It lifts the balls up, although they do get clogged in here because we don't have the belt spacing quite right. But it does its job. The uh, travel for the balls is it'll come up through the uh, intake over there, over it into the hopper here, and then it's gravity fed to the metering wheel, which uh, pushes it into the wheel shooter, and then which that goes into the boiler. Uh, the hopper so far is, it's gonna be pretty much a big box at an angle. Uh, we have polycarb on the bottom, so you can still see the, the electronics, and then uh, the back wall of our intake is the other side and then we're going to put uh, some fabric around the edge to actually contain the balls. Today we finished and mounted the, uh, at the final wheel shooter. Uh, we also added a metering wheel to control the balls because we made, wanted to make sure that this was spinning at uh, the appropriate speed before a ball went in. So what went well is that when we spin this, it gives the ball top spin, which will make it arc down into the boiler. Uh, a few problems is that we didn't make this adjustable, so dialing it in was a bit of a, bit of a fiasco. Some options for uh, metering would be either having a wheel like this that we have, uh, feeding one ball at a time. You can gravity feed it, uh, and then have a little servo that would let the balls in. Uh, we're currently having problems with it clogging in front of the metering wheel here, uh, and the, uh, an idea to fix that is to use a tube with holes drilled through it and pneumatic tubing put through the holes and then it'll spin. Uh, it'll get rid of the clog and it, we're hoping it'll also act as a sort of metering wheel of itself.
All right, so this is uh, one of our designs for a shooter that we ended up not going with. Uh, what it is is it's a quick return linkage system. So the way it works is you have a motor connected to this plate here that rotates. And as this rotates, it pulls this linear rail back. And then when it gets to the bottom of its travel at this um, rotational joint here, it slams it forward. And that slamming forward motion would throw the ball forward, ideally. So some advantages, some advantages of that are that um, you would have basically a perfect, perfectly consistent hit on the ball almost every time, where with a rotary motion it might you know, not be quite as consistent. Uh, the biggest downside is just the complexity of this. So as you can see, we've got two linkages and four joints here that all have to work together. Uh, and the reason we ended up not going with this is because it's pretty high maintenance, it tends to break down a lot, and we don't really have time in three days to make this the way we should. Uh, if you were gonna go with this for your robot, the best thing I could suggest is that you need a pretty high torque motor because when this gets to the point where it's that quick return where you're actually hitting the ball, it takes quite a bit of torque. And to uh, also make it a lot smoother, everything on here needs to be ball bearing. All of our joints are just bolts through holes and linkages. Uh, that's too much friction for a design like this. Every single joint would need to be a ball bearing. And the rail itself needs to be a ball bearing rail too. We tried with some of just uh, slider rails and it was just too much friction for the system to work. So while it might not have been successful, it was a pretty cool design to try out, pretty fun to build and prototype.